So hello everybody, it is Monday and it's not any Monday, it's actually Power Week, which means that the Power BI team has released a new Power BI desktop update, this time May 2019, and there are some huge improvements or uh, feature releases, which is a performance analyzer, we will take that in a future video this week. Uh, but there are also like some small gems that I really want to share with you. Um, so, you know, they don't get lost in, in all other, you know, big updates that they did this month. So what we're going to talk about today is the reporting features, except for the performance analyzer, because I want to do a separate video on that. And I have a treat for you for that, but I have to wait a little bit until I can release that information with you. Okay. <laughs> What's new with the reporting um, features that are new? First of all, they have made some improvements in the filter pane. I always say this, but let me say until it is on preview, this is a pane. So if you go to fault file, options and settings, options, and then you go to Report settings, here you enable the filter pane, and this is if you want to allow your end users to change filter types. And then the filter pane will appear. If you don't see it, it's because you have to click that, okay? And what is new is something that is actually very, very cool. Um, and it's the possibility to change the order of, do you see, region first, address first, to change the order of the filters. And for usability purpose, this is very, very important. So let's say that you have a report and you the first thing you want them to do is filter the year and then maybe the month and then maybe they can filter customer or region. So before they will have to just go and find it, now you can put it either in alphabetical order or in the order that it makes more sense. So make sure you use this feature, really, really good. You can uh, adjust this also on the uh, JSON theme. So go wild in case you want it. Um, next is stable and matrix keyboard navigation, so you can navigate your matrix with the uh, uh, keys. And uh, label in position, oh my gosh, like, when I was going to show you this, I just, oh, <laughs> what's going on? Let me show you. I did have, instead of the line, I had that one. And it is like a line chart, so here's the thing, the update is, as you can see here, we have numbers all over the place. So it goes down and up and down and up. And how Power BI decides that, I don't know. But more often than not, it's a big mess. And uh, it is very, very difficult to read when you have to just like, you know, scroll up and down. And when you come in here, which one is which one? Because if you know that the blue ones are always under, you know which value to take. But here it's just impossible to see anything. So as I said, like, according to Amanda's video, you go to data labels and here you should have something that says positioning and I couldn't find it, it's not there. Like, I would check in the Microsoft store and so like, maybe I don't have the latest one pushed into the computer. I haven't downloaded yet the, the other one. I always do some checks before and I couldn't find it. But here's the thing, that feature is only on the line chart, not on the area chart. And you might say, oh, she said line chart, like, fine, yes. But I thought that it would be on, you know, obviously all the line visuals. No, just for the line chart. So here we have it. Here we have them up and, up and down. You go here, the position is in here. You can say above or below. And this is super neat. So I really hope that they do that with all the line visualizations, either if it's an area chart or if it's a stack chart or, mm. okay? Just, just so it happens to you, only line chart, okay? Next one. And this is, oh my God, okay. Here's the thing, the KPI chart gives me and my customers, the biggest trouble ever. They always come and say, Ruth, the measures does not work. What's going on? Or what value is in here? Let me show you. So the KPI chart, the one that is out of the box, is hard to understand. It's not intuitive at all. So this is what we're going to do. This is here. Um, 
indicator, which is basically what measures you want to have on the KPI, we're going to put sales. And then here in the trend axis, you want to see sales by what? So it is sales by year, by year, month, by week, by whatever. So we put year. And then you see a number and then you see a trend in the back. So what is that? What is that? Let me show you. So if you put year in here and you put sales as a table, please, so we see the numbers, you can see that, uh, let's put it in order. So it is giving you the, la the sales for the last year. It's not the last day of the year, it's the last year. So whatever granularity you put in here, if it's here, it will give you the number for that one, the last one. Okay, so if we put date, so it's giving you 3260. What is that? Again, let's go in here, put date, and go to the last day on the data set. And it's Wednesday, 6th of May on Wednesday, and it is 3260. So it's giving you the last value of whatever um, dimension you've put there, whatever metric or, you know, whatever you put in the trend axis. And the graph below or underneath, what it does is it shows you a line chart, if we would call it like that, of all the dates. Because if we have a date here, it would be all the dates. If we can go back and put year, it will show you the three years that we have available in the data set. Let me remove that. Put it in there. So here we have 1996, 1997, 1998, 1996, 1997, 1998. So whatever you put in the trend axis, you cannot change that. Is whatever you put in here is what you see in the background. Okay, and now the last one. Put year there, we put year as a filter, and then we're going to put it as a drop down box. And if I choose 1998, you can see that the trend in the back disappears. Why? Well, because the trend in the back is years. And if you just choose one, there's no trend. I said, can I get the trend? Well, I choose a filter. No, you can't because the way the visual works. Okay, so hopefully this explains how that visual works. Uh, it's a bit confusing if you don't understand it, okay? Now, what's the update? The update is that you can now change we have it fixed title background indicator here. We can now change the text size. You couldn't do that before. So it was like big and it was big and it, that's it. You, you couldn't change it. No, you can. You can make it bigger and smaller. And you can uh, add the target goal and then it will change colors and yeah. I don't know. You know how it works. Let's leave it like that. So um, if somebody asks you, now you can explain it and you can change the um, the indicator text size. <laughs> okay, um, next uh, video we will continue reviewing the uh, updates for May and uh, hopefully I can share with you the video on the performance analyzer and what's new and what's cool and some useful tips and tricks. Okay, going to leave you for today. See you again tomorrow, another edition of Power Week. Bye.